All right, what's up? Nez is back and ready to do this thing on Halloween night, by the way, which is, you know, quite fitting. Um, sorry for the delay. I did consider and try jerry-rigging an option with my iPhone where I wouldn't be shaking as much, but you know what? Can't do it. Not much I can do about it. So I hope the shaking isn't too detrimental and, um, you know, doesn't detract too much from y'all hopefully enjoying this video. So... Um, it is time to take on this Ancient One and time to do this. So uh, I've set up uh, most of the game. As you can see, our uh, characters are kind of waiting in Arkham, just antsy to get going and take on Gatnathoa. Um, as you can see here, um, we actually got a kind of, you know, I, got, I think it's a little bit of bonus when you have two characters starting out in the same spot because that means that pretty much when one of them moves, um, they can trade first, which is sweet. So, um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Um, so, um, I haven't looked at any of the random items yet, so we'll go over those together. They do each have their personal stories, which is a cool thing that Innsmouth Horror added. I love that quite a bit. Um, uh, I'm not going to read each of them, um, but, you know, more or less, I do want to kind of just give you a sense of, of what each of them are. So for Marie, you know, each time that she draws a spell, I can I put put a clue token on the card. If there are two clue tokens on the card, I get to pass it. But if it gets to five doom tokens, then she fails. So, um, and just to give background on hers, it's about her grand Marie possibly being a witch. Um, Hank Sampson, he is trying to find his dad, and you know I don't remember what Marie's pass and fail really do. I do know play with Hank as many times as I had, as I have. Um, when you pass, you get a pretty cool ally, which is his dad, um, and so that's something I definitely want to try and pass. Um, Bob Jenkins, uh, he's got this whole old money thing, and he um, just needs to get five or more clue tokens, and it's jackpot. Um, fail if he has three or more monster trophies. Place greed in play. So he just needs clue tokens first, not monster tokens. And then Yorick, um, this is new of course, I have never never played with Yorick before. Uh, if William is blessed, place heaven and earth in, in fail. Um, but if he's not unconscious or just insane, then uh, alas poor Yorick. So I need to get him blessed, not too difficult I'm sure. Maybe he'll be, you know, constantly blessed being, you know, a fantastic grave digger. All right. So, um, the fixed possessions are all out, the monies and the clue tokens, etc. Um, Marie starts with the voice of raw, which allows her to exhaust and get some, you know, skill check bonuses if she so desires. And then the enchanted knife is, is great. I, I mean, it's a magical weapon, which, you know, I find those to be a little bit better than physical weapons, just with the different, um, monster, um, immunities out there so let's see what uh marie's got all right her skill is going to be plus one fight that's never a bad thing and then her two spells are enchant weapon all right and cloud memory you may cast an exhaust spend one stamina you or another investigator in your area gains one sanity okay well, I mean, we do know that she is a very valuable spellcaster, so I think that uh, those are a fine trio of spells. Let's see, the Cloud Memory is a Dunwich um, spell. So, cool. So, that's Marie. And then there's Hank over here. Uh, Hank just starts with food, which is one of the more useless items ever. You just discard to reduce any stamina loss by one, but whatever is what it is. His skill is going to be plus one speed. Oh, he already has six or five speed, so that puts it up to six. And he has a task and some dynamite and the golden trumpet. Uh, the tasks are a done which thing. So if I go to the Arkham Asylum witch house and newspaper, I get four clue tokens and $5. Eh, not bad. You never know if you have time for those, but something to consider. Dynamite is just a one-time, hopefully kill um, 
monsters in the area. And then the Golden Trumpet. Um, it's more or less um, keeping us from losing sanity, which is cool. Hank doesn't normally need to you know, worry about sanity, though, because of his special ability. I didn't really go over this because, again, I've played with him so much. But um, Hank does not make a horror check when he first encounters a monster. So he just is dumbly like, uh, I got this. I'm not going to worry about how hideous you are. I'm, I'm, I'm a farm hand. I'm, I'm just going to take care of it because that's all I know how to do. So um, Yorick doesn't start with much fixed possessions. So just four bucks. So a lot of random stuff to start for William here. Let's see what he's got. Um, plus one lore. That um, he's not much of a spellcaster, but at least may get him to be a better gate closer if need be. Um, a lantern. Plus one to luck chucks. Cross. That's not all that helpful. Holy water. Ooh, but at the end of the day, we did get an elder sign. Otherwise, that is a crappy. Um, set of starting items, honestly. Holy Water is a one-time use. Cross really doesn't do much unless it's an undead, you know, opponent, or, I mean, monster. But, I mean, as you all know, and if you don't, Elder Sign's fantastic, because you can use that to seal a gate instead of using five clues, and you also get to reduce the Doom Track by one. So, Hala, that's nice. Overall, not super pleased with this starting arrangement for William. And then finally, Bob. You know, I call him, you know, I said, you know, son of a bitch, you know, when I first did the first video. It's because he's just a selfish dude. All he cares about is, you know, finding himself enough money to get the next boat. And so hopefully throughout our journey, he, he gets a little bit of, uh, you know, humility and understands that there's a greater purpose to all this. Um, another task, an old journal, all three clue tokens discard the journal, again, not much permanent stuff here, dull chance, oh, that's not bad, no, if you pass game one ally, lose two sanity and discard dull chance, so an ally would be nice. Oh, there's another enchanted knife. And he's got plus one luck. So that's a very basic plus one fight, plus one speed, plus one lore, plus one luck. So no of the none of the real special um, skill cards. I wouldn't say that we overall have a great setup. Um, it's not bad, but it, it definitely is not uh, not not wonderful. So um, we're going to go ahead and set up their sliders. I'm going to you know, turn the video off as I do that, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, sliders are now set up. We're about ready to do this thing. Um, just a note, I normally like to go with all luck as much as I can to start off my sliders. The others normally go all the way to the right with speed and fight. Um, in this case, you'll see that William, Hank, and Bob all have the high luck. Marie is starting with the high lore, just due to the fact that she's got those three spells. Not sure how much use they're going to get early on, but it is what it is. So, uh, let's get this show on the road. One thing I did want to say, um, there are 139 Mythos cards between Innsmouth, Dunwich, and the base game. Uh, so what I do, and everyone should have some sort of method of madness when it comes to Mythos cards, don't just shuffle. I mean, you can. But, you know, shuffling is not going to be perfectly random. Um, what I like to do is, is plug numbers into random.org and get myself a Mythos deck that is purely random. Um, so what you see here is 25 random Mythos cards um, selected by random.org. They've been shuffled like crazy, and um, I'm excited to do this thing. Now, it's important to note, we may end up getting 25 Mythos cards from the base game. I hope not but I didn't want to mess with the mythos. That's never a smart thing to do. So um, let's go ahead and the last thing we need to do, game's all set up, is to draw our first mythos card. Wah, wah, wah. And it is the Tempest. It's an environment weather card. So luck checks are gonna be made a minus one penalty, but speed checks are 
plus one, and we get one additional bonus point. So that's cool. Um, but anyway, look, it is a Dunwich card right off the bat. So Gardner's Place is going to get the first gate of the game. Again, stays face down. So Gardner's Place gets their clue token removed. And that instead goes to Cold Spring Glen. So that now has two clue tokens. It's important to notice, again, in this game, whenever I take two clue, to clue tokens at once, I have a one in eight chance currently right now of being devoured due to this bad dude. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, so that's the first thing that happens. The gate appears at Gardner's place. Um, now we draw a monster. We just have four investigators. I have the most ghetto of ghetto of ghetto monster bags ever. I need an actual nice bag. Can you do something nice for me? You can do that. Oh, monsters just flew all over the place. So we'll need to find one and, and, uh, sorry about that. I had a smaller monster bag, but my son needed to use it for trick, trick or treating. I know, very selfish of him, right? So our first monster of the game is going to be a go a witch. Not that big of a deal. Um, the now it's important to note I've got my six monster limit stands here. Um, these are not monster limit stands in. Dunwich and Innsmouth, monsters do not count against the monster limit. So, um, I believe, yeah, mo Witch's symbol is a circle. So she's going to move to Blasted Heath right off the bat. She's right by a Vortex right away. That's something that I'm probably going to have one of my investigators trying to take care of if possible. Alright, we've already talked about the environment here. Flying monsters in the sky when... Um, don't need to worry about that. So... Uh, I always put my um, current environment cards just right in the middle of Arkham there, just so I remember that they are there for a reason. And guess what, guys? It's time to actually play this game. Alrighty.